So we are back with the elimination reactions and uh, this is module number three in which we are supposed to study about even CB mechanism and we'll be talking about uh, substitution versus elimination reactions. So first go for even CB reaction. As the name indicate, even CB, even CB stands for uh, E for elimination, one for unimolecular and CB stands for conjugate base. So this reaction takes place through a conjugate base and therefore the name is given even CB reaction. Now this is just like an even mechanism. It also is a two-step reaction in which instead of formation of carbocation, a carbanion is formed in the first step by deprotonation. And this carbanion then in second step undergoes further elimination to give you a alkyl moiety. So uh, this is the first step. Let's say this is your substrate. Now there are some requirements that in this particular reaction, uh, your hydrogen atom attached to a beta carbon should be attached to a electron withdrawing group. If you have an electron withdrawing group attached to your beta position, what happens, this hydrogen becomes acidic can be given very easily in the form of H plus ion to generate a carbanion. Once this carbanion is formed, this carbanion is a conjugate base of your substrate and therefore this name is given. This carbanion formed is stable because of the presence of this electron withdrawing group which will stabilize this particular carbanion and then this carbanion in the second step undergoes further elimination of the leaving group to form the product where well, now you can see a unsaturated product is formed in the final step. So this is how your even CV reaction can be written in two steps. So what is the requirement just now we have discussed that there should be one electron withdrawing group attached to the carbon from where you are going to remove hydrogen. The electron withdrawing group increases the acidity of the hydrogen atom attached to that carbon. And because of that, the, it can easily undergo deprotonation or it becomes a Bronsted acid, which can give H plus ion easily. The conjugate form, base form, is stabilized because of this electron withdrawing group. As well as once this carbanion is formed, then it undergoes elimination of a leaving group to form the product. So generally at beta position, electron withdrawing groups like carbonyl group, nitro, cyano, sulfonyl group, such kind of groups are preferred because they are going to involve in the stabilization of conjugate base that is carbon. Similarly, it is observed that if your living group is poor, then uh, this particular reaction uh, takes place at the faster rate. So these are a few examples of E1CB reaction. Now you can see here, this particular reaction, OH minus abstracts a proton, generates a carbonium, which then now you can see here, the carbanion is stabilized because of this aldehyde group, which is an electron withdrawing group. And because of this stabilization, the conjugate base can be formed easily, which further undergoes elimination to give you alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde as a product. The product is highly stable. If you remember, this happens in aldol condensation type of reactions. It is just like the even CB reaction. Let us take another example now. If you have, uh, base, first a carbanion is formed and then this carbanion breaks down with the loss of leaving group produces the product where now and there is a double bond between your alpha and beta carbon atom. But this reaction will be fast. You can see this is a reversible step. First step is a reversible. So if you have electron withdrawing group attached to this, car this carbon atom from where you are going to remove hydrogen, it will not be a reversible, it will more towards forward side. Stabilization of carbonyl will be more and then further it can be undergoing uh, elimination in the fast step to give you product. If you see this example now, see here, this particular carbon has a hydrogen to which cyanide groups are attached. As well as at alpha position also we have a cyanide group. Cyanide is electron withdrawing group as well as a good living group. So what you'll find, if you use a base, let's say, Triethylamine is your base 
it will remove this hydrogen generator carbanion a carbanion stabilization by resonance is shown over here so this particular stabilization is expected whenever reaction goes over here even cv mechanism and then it further then breaks it down to give you a highly stable product you can see over here so this is how a even cv reaction takes place Let's see. Now, even CV mechanism is also a stereo selective reaction. If you take this substrate, you'll find that this is your electron withdrawing group, and these hydrogen atoms at the alpha position are acidic in nature because of presence of this carbon group. So, this particular substrate will go because it has these alpha hydrogens and these alpha hydrogens which are acidic in nature, and you have OH as a leaving group. This reaction will take place twice, even CV. A first carbanion, let's say, generated here, OH will go as a leaving group and a double bond is formed here. Similarly, in the next step, this hydrogen is removed and the hydroxyl will go as a leaving group and you'll get double bond here. So, choice even CP reaction will take place. But what you'll find that this particular molecule can be written in geometrical isomeric form. But you observe that the product obtained will always acquire E configuration because it is highly stable. The trans configuration or the anti orientation is favored as compared to sin orientation, and you get this product as a stable product. If I take one bromo to one fluoro two bromo cyclohexane, this particular molecule this is carbon number one, this is carbon number two. This is a cis isomer which undergoes even CB mechanism for the elimination and requires very strong base like soda amide or potassium amide KNH2. Or NH2 undergoes syn elimination. Now, here hydrogen and fluorine are removed, and you get the product where now you can see a double bond is formed between these two carbonates. So, this is another example which says that it undergoes syn elimination reaction to give the product. So, here we have seen electron withdrawing group twice, even CV mechanism to give you a trans or E product. So now we have in module one we have spoken about even mechanism in module two we have spoken about e2 mechanism and now we have just now we have spoken about even cv mechanisms so what are the comparative aspect i know that even and even cv both are two step reactions whereas e2 is a one step mechanism in even what happens first ch bond breaks and a carboca carbocation is formed okay so first sorry the living group departs and then ch bond is broken to give you unsaturated product where c double bond c is formed between alpha and beta carbon atom or a pi bond is formed between alpha and beta carbon atom so your hydrogen and living group they are trans to with respect to each other and it undergoes elimination to give first carbocation and then the product in even cv you will find that first the hydrogen departs and you get a carbanion and then living group. So exactly opposite things happen in even and even CD mechanism. If you take E2 elimination that your living group and hydrogen should be anti with respect to each other as well as it is formed that it's a concerted mechanism. That means the bond between carbon and hydrogen and the bond between carbon and living group this is your beta carbon, this is your alpha carbon, are broken simultaneously in the same step as well as a new bond between carbon, alpha and beta carbon are formed and you get a product. So this is how I can compare these three reactions. If I study about kinetic kinetics of these reactions, I know that even CB and even since there are two step reactions, two maxima, two transition states are observed and intermediate is formed. In E1 CB, carbanion is formed as an intermediate. In E1, a carbocation is formed as an intermediate. Whereas in E2 elimination, only one maxima, only one transition state is observed. It's a single step reaction where no intermediate is formed like E1 or E1 CB mechanism. And you get the product. In all, you get unsaturated product or you get a sp3 carbon is converted into sp2 and if i start with sp2 i'll get sp carbon as a product due to these elimination reactions 
So if I want to know, so we have seen the comparative aspect of E1, E2 and E1CB. Now let us talk about the comparative aspects of substitution and elimination reactions. So we have got four mechanisms. We have SN1, we have SN2, we have E1 and E2. E1CB is rarely under certain condition is observed. So we are going to focus more on SN1, SN2, E1 and E2 mechanism. So it, various factors are responsible. The first thing comes at the structure of the substrate. And we know that the primary alkyl lines will always undergo SN2 type of reaction with good nucleophile. Whereas tertiary alkyl lines will never undergo SN2 reaction because the backside attack is difficult, impossible. It is sterically crowded and therefore they will never undergo SN2 reaction. So we'll fit in mind that tertiary alkyl lines will never undergo SN2 reaction. And primary alkyl lines, if you have got good nucleophile, then will undergo SN2 type of reaction. Similarly, tertiary alkyl lines in case if we take then it might undergo E2 elimination reaction if you have a good base in your reaction mixture. Secondary alkyl lines, we can't talk about these substrates that whether it will be E1, E2, whether it will be SN1, SN2, because it is very difficult. All the factors like nature of living group, nature of nucleophile, type of solvent, and type of groups attached to this secondary al uh, alkyl line all will together decide whether the reaction will go by elimination or substitution reaction. If the reaction is carried out at higher temperature, then elimination is favored. And if the reaction is carried out at lower temperature, then substitution is favored. If your nucleophile is there, then the action will be SN. And if base is there, then the action will be elimination. Generally, tertiary butoxide like uh, bases which are bulky will favor elimination reaction but if you have small uh, small nucleophile like Vr minus iodide they'll favor the substitution reaction so size of nucleophile or base it's also responsible whether reaction will be substitution or elimination so I've got these two possibilities that reaction may undergo unimolecular or bimolecular mechanism we have two options in unimolecular, either SN1 or E1. We have two options in bimolecular, SN2 or E2. Then how do I decide? So if I have got a tertiary substrate, then there are chances that it will undergo SN1 or E1 because carbocation can be generated very easily. If the reaction is carried out at higher temperature, then definitely it will undergo elimination reaction. And if it under carried out, at a lower temperature, then it will undergo SN reaction, where you'll find that will be rather SN1 reaction, Br will be replaced by OH, and you'll get the substitution product. If I've got um, living groups, or if I've got groups like halides, cyanides, SR, SH, then you'll find that generally substitution will take place and not the elimination so smaller groups if present as a living group then substitution will be favored or elimination here you can see you have br and you have cn as a nucleophile br goes as a living group and you get substitution product in for such kind of substrate but the moment i change base size here tertiary butoxide is used as a uh, butoxide is used then it will act as a base and then elimination reaction will take place See the now living group is same, that is BR, BR. But then it is decided by the size of your um, base or a nucleophile. If tertiary butoxide is there, then E2 elimination will take place to give you the elimination product. So there are various factors which will decide whether reaction will be elimination or substitution. We'll take this example. See, this is your nucleophile now and our base and you have these substrates. This is a primary alkyl chloride and this is a secondary alkyl chloride. If I take secondary alkyl chloride, same nucleophile can become a base and brings about E2 elimination reaction. But if I have got primary alkyl line, then backside attack becomes possible. And if backside attack is possible, then it will go via SN2 mechanism to give you the 
substitution product. So now there is a competition between these two, whether elimination or substitution. Who decide? So the structure of the substrate decide. If it is secondary, tertiary, then elimination will be favored. If it is primary, then substitution will be favored. So SN1 and E1 also then compete with each other. We have already discussed about this in the first module also. So these two are the expected products. That one is the elimination product, another is a substitution product. Again, if reaction is carried out at elevated temperature, E1 will be favored at lower temperature, SN1 reaction will be favored in this. There are certain rules we have discussed, that is Bread's rule. Now in this particular reaction, after departure of living group, you get a carbocation. Now again, two possibilities are there, whether it will undergo elimination or whether it will undergo substitution. If it undergoes elimination, you'll get a double bond at the bridgehead, which is not possible. It makes it highly unstable. And therefore, Bread's rule says that no double bond at bridgehead. And therefore, this substrate will never undergo a elimination reaction, rather it will undergo substitution reaction. And therefore, now you can see here in step two, you get only S1 product and not the E1 product. So these are the some uh, structures and uh, you are supposed to remember such kind of rules where it becomes easy then to decide whether it will be elimination or whether it will be substitution reaction. Again, you can see here that this is the reaction where you get alkene as a product by, now here OH- minus acts as a base. In this reaction, it acts as a nucleophile. So it depends that whether it will act as a nucleophile or whether it will act as a base. Even solvent will decide if it is elimination E1 or SN1. Solvent plays a very important role. Here it forms an elimination product, here it forms a substitution product. So it depends upon various factors, just now we discussed. Just here you can see now, a CN minus is a good nucleophile as well as. So what will happen if it is a good nucleophile, it will replace BR and you get a SN2 product. But if I take this substrate and treat it with OH minus, OH minus is a strong base. In strong basic condition, elimination reaction is preferred and you get E2, uh, E2 elimination product. So it depends upon whether you have a good nucleophile or whether it's a strong base. If strong base is there, elimination reaction will take place. And if you have a good nucleophile, then substitution reaction will take place. Now since this is a primary alkyl light, SO2 is possible in this case. If I take this, it is a tertiary alkyl light. So obviously SO2 is not possible over here. Backside attack is very difficult. So it will undergo E2 elimination reaction. So again, these are the examples you can see here. This is particular a bulky group, can't act as a nucleophile. It's a strong base on the elimination product. But here, this alkoxide is not that bulky. It is ethoxide, it is a tertiary butoxide. It's a non-bulky group. So it can act as a nucleophile, easily can attack this to form the substitution product. And here now, a substitution product is a major product, whereas in the previous reaction, if you have a bulky group, then it becomes a base and brings about E2 elimination reaction. SN2 product will be minor. In this case, second reaction, E2 elimination product will be minor. So size of your base or nucleophile also plays a very important role. If you have a non-bulky group, then two possibilities are there, that E2 and SN2, both possibilities are there. Which are the non-bulky bases or nucleophiles? So your primary, secondary, tertiary amines are there, ammonia is there, OH minus, OR minus, halides, they're non-bulky groups. Which are the bulky groups? So tertiary butoxide, or neopentyl pentoxide, or uh, this particular molecule, uh, ions, or uh, these will generate a base and they will always show E2 elimination reaction. So bulky group favor elimination, whereas non-bulky group, both possibilities are there depending upon other reaction condition. One will be major, other will be minor product. So let us summarize what we have just now studied. So it depends upon structure of substrate, solvent, as well as what type of base it is. If I have got primary alkyl halide, 
it can be chtbr or any primary alkylide whether protic or a protic solvent is there sn2 reaction will always occur if you have a base then e2 elimination is possible with a strong base but if you have methyl bromide it will always undergo a substitution reaction it will never undergo elimination because it does not have beta hydrogen for undergoing elimination if i have a secondary alkyl halide then there is a competition between sn1 sn2 as well as e1 and e2 elimination it is decided by various factors but you can see that if you have a protic polar solvent or a strong base then both sn1 e1 is possible in proti polar protic solvent because we know that a carbocation is stabilized by polar protic solvents similarly if you have a base then elimination as well as sn2 reaction is possible and if you have a protic solvent then sn2 reaction will be favored if you have got bulky base then e2 reaction will be favored if you have got tertiary alkyl halide then tertiary alkyl halide will never undergo sn2 mechanism they will generally undergo e2 elimination if you have a strong base or a bulky base but if you have solvents protic solvents or a protic solvent then there is a competition between sn1 and e1 reaction so both products are possible one will be major other will be minor so this is how by using this chart one can again understand and analyze whether you will get substitution product what kind of substitution possible or whether you will get elimination product and again which elimination reaction so this is how we are compared now or how we decide whether it is elimination or substitution reaction with this we come to an end of this particular chapter whatever we have done just now in this particular module based on that some questions are asked you are supposed to go through these questions some hints are also there using this hints you can always predict the mechanism and the product for this particular reaction so use the hint and try to write structure of product as well as discuss what type of elimination is will take place what type of substitution if possible or elimination possible you please try to write the product structure and mechanism for these reactions so thank you so much and with this we end with the elimination reactions thank you